Hello everybody, welcome to the Daily Sip. My name is Oliver, my mission is to bring you closer to organic Japanese green tea and today what we're gonna dive into is in the topic of the cultivar Okumidori. So I really want to explain you a little bit what Okumidori is and the second one is we take a deep dive into the new Okumidori premium matcha which we got from Mr. Nakai and I will explain you a little bit the taste profile of this tea. So let's get started and talk a little bit about what we mean when we talk about cultivar. So as a background story, what you might not know, what is important is China is actually the birthplace of green tea for Japan as well, because the monks which were doing their studies in China um, after the period of Christ brought in in the 8th century um, to Japan the tea plant and started to cultivate it. So that's why also there's a little bit of a stronger bond, a stronger linkage of green tea to all the Zen Buddhism. This is the fact that actually the tea has been brought in or the tea seeds have been brought in by monks into Japan. These um, tea plants then uh, are called Sairai because they were all seed grown in the beginning um, and this is something which is also referred to as the native tea plant of Japan or these are re uh, referred as native tea plants in Japan. They're not really native as the green tea is coming from China originally, but they are also might say wrongly referred to the native tea plants and they are growing on their own. They're growing on different levels. And, on a, and they're also mixing uh, in between themselves in a natural way. On the other hand, we talk about cultivars. Cultivars is something which has been perfectionized, especially after the Second World War in Japan. And I think the most known or the most famous cultivar is Yabukita. And what happens is actually they just cut each time a branch and they replant this branch to really keep the same taste and not to change the flavor profile of the plant. So this is um, what cultivar actually is. So one is just cut and the same and not from a seed grown plant and the other ones are seed grown. When we talk about Okumidori, Okumidori is actually a crossbreed of Yabukita, which is the most famous um, cultivar in Japan. Around 70% of all production is coming from the Yabukita and uh, Okumidori is only planted on a single digit um, level in the whole spectrum of Japanese green tea, but it is still quite a good cultivar, often, um, often uh, planted by uh, farmers to grow a decent tea. And um, here with Okumidori, it is actually very close to the Yabukita. It is also uh, blended with Yabukita when we are uh, when uh, farmers are producing green tea because they say on a taste spectrum there it's quite close. I think there's still a very nice difference uh, to Yabukita which I explain to you later. And um, this Alcomidor is actually a crossbreed of the Yabukita together with the Sairai, so a seed grown plant number 16 and it has been put together and since then the Okumidori exists as a cultivar and has been registered in 1974. And um, this is actually a little bit the birth moment of uh, the, this cultivar. It has been developed in Shizuoka, so a little bit south of Tokyo. And it is also quite a frost resistant and late budding cultivar. So normally when you take a reference point for when is the harvest ready, you often say kind of the number, so the center point is Yabukita and then you have early budding cultivars which come a little bit earlier like the Asatsuyu for example and you have late budding cultivars but here we talk about eight to ten days later and uh, Alcomido is actually one which is coming a little bit later. That's why it's also not preferred um, by uh, the tea farmers in Japan because actually being early in the harvest is quite an important factor. And this is a reference to the Shincha, so the first harvest, the first tea of the year. And there actually the farmers always want to be first first in the market because who's first in the market gets the highest price. So that's why the later budding cultivar are not so much preferred, but still Okumidori could establish itself 
quite well, especially when it's blended together with the Yabukita. The yield is also very good, so that's also a preference point for the farmer for the Okumidori. So this is a little bit the background story. When we talk about Okumidori, what do we talk about in terms of taste profile? So when we go and uh, have a look at this matcha, uh, Okumidori, um, in terms of shape of the tea leaf, it's also an oval shaped leaf, and but it's a little bit smaller than Yabukita, but as the yield is quite good, it doesn't, um, it's not a big problem. And in terms of taste profile, here we talk about um, a cultivar which has a very decent fine and smooth note. And I think in comparison to Yabakita, it's important to say the theanine level is slightly higher, which is making this tea from a taste perspective just a little bit smoother, a little bit rounder and a little bit more full bodied. So what you can see here, we talk about the matcha. Matcha is a uh, for, um, uh, powdered green tea, so a powdered green tea form, de-stemmed, de-veined, and as it is a ceremonial grade due uh, to the strong green color, which I showed you before, um, therefore this matcha has a very smooth and sweet taste. When we talk about culinary grade, this is a little bit lower grade, then the tea is often not shaded and we get a little bit more yellowish or even grayish color. Here, definitely very smooth, very green, very intense in terms of color. So here we definitely talk about a very, very sweet, or I can expect a very, very sweet taste profile of this matcha. Good, so what we're gonna do, very simple for the matcha, um, as I'm gonna do a pure matcha, so a matcha without any milk, sugar or anything, I'm gonna sift around two grams, the amount I showed you before, And I'm gonna sift the matcha, very important, to avoid crumbs or anything. And we're gonna add 100 milliliter of water. Here I prepared 70 degrees Celsius water. This is what I like pretty much. And... Um, 70 degrees Celsius for the Americans watching is 165 Fahrenheit. Then what I will do is I do this zigzag motion, which I'll show you here. So I'm just gonna whisk this matcha. Try not to spill anything, but for you to see. And this matcha then creates, and thanks to the long shading, it creates a beautiful, beautiful foam. In my opinion, the foam is really linked directly to the amount of amino acids or protein. Often when you have milk and you steam it, it also creates this beautiful foam. This is just coming from uh, the high amount of proteins. In terms of matcha, here we talk about amino acids and amino acids. The main amino acids, which is super interesting, is the L-theanine that we're looking for with it. Uh, kind of calm and relaxing alpha brainwave triggering uh, properties. So we see a very, very beautiful, very green matcha, nice foam, which was created on top of it. And the foam, what it does, it is just creates an additional smooth layer to the matcha, which makes it just very, very beautiful to drink. And uh, it's for me, um, just this a little bit small extra, which you're getting when you're enjoying a beautiful high grade ceremonial matcha is that this beautiful foam really gives this smooth and really soft texture in addition to the beautiful sweet taste of the matcha. So let's have a look and the taste, um, give a deep dive on the taste. First on the smell side, what we get is uh, that we have quite some decent amount of edamame, I get young spinach notes, a little bit of banana, a little bit mango, but these are much more softest notes. So the first notes and the stronger notes I'm getting are definitely edamame, are definitely this uh, fresh spinach. With a little bit of sweetness, also reminds me a little bit of cashew nuts. So this kind of cashew nutty sweetness. Mm. 
-hmm. It's quite strong in the edamame flavor in the beginning. Mm -hmm. and especially when you take a little bit more foam, it's just giving an additional kind of push on this more nutty notes. So these cashew nuts, these almond nut notes, I'm getting much, much more and take a little bit more of this uh, foam and it really, it's really, it's really beautiful. So when we compare it, for example, to Yabukita, so when you take Yabukita Matcha, Yabukita Matcha is much stronger on this a little bit greener notes. So they, in my opinion, are more triggered by the polyphenols, by the catechins, which are also more relevant in terms of the bitterness and the stringency uh, together with the caffeine, which is in the tea. But um, the Yabukita definitely shows more of this a little bit greener, fresh spinach, fresh wheatgrass, a little bit uh, kind of uh, fresh cut grass, even uh, notes which you're getting. Very important when you do a matcha latte, so that's why the Yabukita is, in my opinion, much better and a much better option for a matcha latte. But here we get a very, very smooth and round note. So we have this edamame, we have first in the smell of fresh spinach, but it doesn't, ma it doesn't manifest itself too much in the taste profile. The taste profile goes more in kind of this sweet, soft edamame. It brings directly in a little bit of these nutty notes and there's quite a decent umami note. So a little bit this savory sweetness, but not too strong in this case. So it's quite a smooth, round, fresh, light tasting edamame flavor, nutty flavor, and then a umami flavored matcha prof uh, taste profile quite well balanced in p between these this notes and that's why this tea i would say it's very very beautiful in its balance there's nearly no astringency to it so it's clear, uh, practically to zero which is v just amazing i like matchas especially when they're not very astringent most of us, I guess, we prefer a little bit sweeter matchas, but even in the ceremonial grade, you still get a little bit of the sweetness. But in addition um, to the sweetness, it's really this very nice journey you're getting from the edamame, a little bit greener side. Then you go over to the more nutty flavor profile, cashew nut flavor, which I'm getting in a little bit of almond flavor, which I'm getting in, and then um, it goes over to a little bit more savory, a little bit more of a lingering taste profile in your palate, and then manifesting a little bit more this savory, a little bit more this umami flavor profile, but it's very, very decent. Umami, you might know from the Japanese cuisine, which is a typical, um, it's, which is kind of a typical type of, um, of, of, taste in the Japanese food, which you get a little bit from, uh, for example, for soy sauces is, is quite triggering to umami quite a lot. But you also get it from tomatoes, for example, ripe tomatoes with a little bit this sweeter taste profile. That's actually the umami that you're getting. And um, what did I want to tell you else is about the matcha. So again, in comparison to the Yabukita, Yabukita in the end is, has quite a refreshing tone. So the Okumidori versus the Yabukita is the Okumidori is rounder, finer, smoother, and uh, but doesn't level so much. So it's a very nicely balanced between the different notes. The Yabukita, in my opinion, is on the one hand, it's quite green. So fresh spinach, wheatgrass, a little bit in that direction. Uh, but it is also a little bit more of uplifting, a little bit of a fresher tea. So it brings in more the citrusy note, it brings in more these refreshing tones and with this especially also a little bit more stringency. So in the end the Yabukita just pushes a little bit more on the side of the stringency. Mm -hmm. There's a slight hint in the beginning of astringency, but it's, it's, it's dissolving quite quickly and leaves space for the sweet notes. Now I was really looking for astringency and uh, if I can find it, but it is definitely existent, but very at very, very decent, very low level and disappears quite fast. So that's a very, very beautiful round cultivar. So in my opinion, or what I like about it is that it's actually this 
full-bodied and nicely balanced uh, flavor profile of the tea and this is what Okomidori for me stands for. It's very beautiful, round and sweet. Meanwhile, the Yabukita, for example, plays more on this a little bit more uh, greener notes, a little bit more spinachy notes, and on the fresh side where you get these more citrusy notes. Meanwhile, here we get a sweet edamame note, then we go over into a sweet, a little bit nutty note, and then in this sweet, savory umami note. So it's much more balanced, in my opinion. Good. So I hoped this one was instructive for you. A little bit of background story on the Okomidori and on this new matcha we got from Mr. Nakai coming from an Okomidori cultivar. So I hope you like this one. And if you have a, have a question, please feel free to leave a comment, ask us a question. We are more than happy to answer it. I guess I'll see you next time. Thank you and bye bye.